In this video, we're going to be taking a look at using CorelDRAW to create the softball and this kind of heart shape with the laces. Um, we're also going to be using EasyStone a little bit because EasyStone has some unique functionality that will kind of help automate some of the process for us. So what we're going to do, uh, first of all, we have imported our bitmap reference image, and we're going to come over here to the specialty champions especially tab and choose set size and we're going to go from the left edge and right edge and set the size so the finished design we want it to be nine and a half inches then we'll go ahead and lock this image now if we look at the laces what I think these are we have these thin laces and then like this right here is like a circle it's hard to tell because our reference image isn't that good to begin with, but that's how I'm going to choose to make my laces. So we'll kind of get into that here uh, briefly in a moment. So what I would do is first of all create our softball, so which is just a simple circle. So just create a circle of any size using our circle tool here in CorelDRAW and to constrain to a perfect circle and not an oval, we just hit the control key and you can see it constrains to a perfect circle when you do that. Okay, so then we're just going to position our circle over our softball. Now, in my case, it's pretty well exact, but what you would do, let's, let me just show you an example here. Let's just create a circle. And maybe what we'll do is we'll create one that we know is way bigger than the actual softball itself. And then we, what we do is we kind of place that larger circle just by eye above our softball and then we could select it if we hold our shift key down and drag from a corner you could see it it will resize from the center of our circle then we get it close and then we can fine tune its, its exact position now to make these curved laces we need a path so we're going to use our three point curve tool and just follow basically the existing artwork from edge to edge and then that third point so when you zoom in here I don't know if you can see it in the video, but because I have the snapped objects turned on, when you get to an edge, it will say from edge to edge. And so we're going to go from edge to edge and the middle here. Now, obviously, this isn't exactly like the original, so we'll switch over to our shape tool and click on this end node. Can't probably see it very well, but if you click on that shape tool, you'll get these control handles, which we can then manipulate a little bit better. Now, basically, we just have two control points, one on either side. The fewer the control points, I feel like the better the, uh, the better result. Now, sometimes when you're creating artwork, you have to have more control points. But you can see just by a little bit of manipulation on the two end points, you can see we we're able to basically replicate that same curvature fairly easily. All right, let's go back to enhance mode. Now what we want to do is take that curve that we just made and basically what we're looking to do is we're looking to duplicate it exactly. So we're going to just take this control handle here and hold our control key and as we pull it over, when you hold your control key, just like kind of like it, it when we were using the oval tool, it snapped right to a perfect circle. That's kind of what this does too. By holding the control key, it snaps uh, this path that we're dragging to the same proportion as the original path and then right click to make a duplicate and so now we have a duplicate and so you can see it's it's somewhat close to the original this is sometimes when you're working with artwork you'll you'll make some small changes along the way and this is one of the changes i decided to make and then because this path is still collect, uh, connect, uh, selected we can then go to our three-point curve tool and add to it so I'll just do something like this, okay? So that kind of gets you your basic beginning starting point, if you will. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag this over so you can see kind of what we have. So these are the objects that we have. Now this heart looks a little bit funny right there. You see that right there? So what I would probably do is go ahead and double click to add basically what I would consider an anchor point. And then if we delete the one in the middle, and it kind of smooths itself out there, just like so. All right. 
So now let's go ahead and let's just delete that artwork and take a look at these laces. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take, um, I guess I'll take my two point line tool and I'll drag out a lace just like that. And I want to see what thickness this is. I want it to represent pretty close to what we have already. So uh, we're going to go into our outline pen dialog box here. And let's just try to go ahead and apply two point. So that's not very wide. So what if we did four point wide? That's better. So now I, I, get, a, I get an idea of... And when I say four points, I really mean four pixels. Let's try 10 pixels. That's not quite wide enough. Let's do, what if we doubled that to 20? Now we're getting there. So you can kind of see what I'm doing there. I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it at 30 pixels wide. I think I'll be happy with that. So then we'll go back to our uh, shape edit tool. And I'm just going to extend this out a little bit. Something like that. All right, so now I kind of have, uh, that might be a little bit thick as I look at it again. So let's go back to 20. All right, I think that'll work out okay. So now I have this basic piece. Now I'm just gonna, the rest of it, I'm just basically gonna do by eye, more or less. So what I wanna do here is I wanna take this and I'm just gonna move it up a little bit so it's a little bit less of an angle. I'm going to flip it over. And then I want to take these two pieces and right click on band. And all that does is it, it connects those as one. And then I'm going to use uh, my circle tool again and just visually draw out a circle, right click to get rid of the outline, but then left click to give it a fill. And then I'm going to go from the center of this circle right here to the node. So I want just like that. And then do the same thing over here. Just copy this over right to there. So this will become my lace um, for my softball. And again, you can make it whatever you want to. I'm just kind of walking you through the process. So now what I want to do is take this path, this line, if you will, this has a thickness. We gave it, if you remember, we gave this like a 20 thickness. And now we want to take that thickness. If we, In fact, if we go to wireframe mode, you'll see it's just a path. It doesn't actually have the thickness visible. But if we were to choose this option right here, which is to convert outline to object, well, now we have that path. We have that object. We have that thickness. And so we're going to select that and we'll go ahead and weld it together, and that becomes our lace. Now, if we're smart, we may want to save this for later use, so let's just tuck away a copy. We'll leave that copy, and then we're going to work with just this over here. So let's go ahead and, and uh, let's take our softball. Let's right-click to get rid of our outline, and let's left-click to give it a color, and then this, this becomes our lace. So we're going to make a copy, and then we're going to use our blend tool. And all we do is drag from one shape to the other. And by default, it's going to create many shapes in between. And it's going to automatically create what we call a blend group. If we select the blend group up here in our toolbar, you can see there are 20 laces. All right. Now, remember, we gave the laces a thickness of 20. So let's give the path that we're applying those to a thickness of 20 as well. So you can see now that path has a thickness of 20. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and select our other paths as well and give them a thickness of 20 as well. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to apply this blend to this path. And so to do that, we're just going to select the blend and then our path. And then we're going to open up Vinyl Essentials here in EasyStone and choose the Apply Blend option. Now, if you notice, Rotate Object is checked by default because that's the most typical way we would use this. But it doesn't look quite right. So we have these control points, one on either end. If we select it, we can rotate this. And as soon as we do that, you could see 
you know, what kind of effect that has. So let's go ahead and rotate this one. All right, so now you can kind of see how this is coming together. Now, if you look at the original one, it, it kind of got tight down here at the bottom. And the way they did that basically was just to rotate this one. You see how it kind of comes and gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, you know, you may like that effect, you may not. But one thing's for sure, I think we need more steps, more laces. So let's go ahead and try, let's try doubling the amount of laces. That might be a little bit extreme. Let's maybe do 30. I think that looks pretty good. Now, let's look at this a little bit more in detail. So you can see the laces coming here. Well, first of all, let's just look at this one. And you can see that this lace right here comes beyond the path. Well, how do you make that adjustment? Well, what you would do is you would select the end shape and then click on it a second time and you'll get this little tiny control uh, point. This works backwards the way you think. So we want to move this lace back to the end point of our path. So one would think you would take the control point and move it back. But actually, it has an opposite effect. You can see now it's even farther away than it was. So if we bring it this way, now you can see we snapped it right to that corner. So you can see the laces are pretty good along that path up to a certain point down here. And now you can see the point starts coming off the path. And the further we get down to the end, the further that point gets away. So now we might want to adjust that. So again, you would select that end control Click on it again, and you can't select the intermediate ones, only the start and finish. Um, so again, we want to move this, this piece, we want to move it to the right. So the control point, we want to move to the left. Because remember, it has an opposite effect. So, and now we want to move this down to the end. So we want to move this up. So it's exactly backwards, which is really confusing. All right, so now you can see how these laces do fall better right on along that path, ready to go. All right, so that takes care of that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this because now we need to do this top part right here. And basically, it's the same process. We make a copy. We create a blend. We then have to apply that blend to the path. We then have to modify the end control by rotating it. We then have to modify this end control by rotating it. We then have to select the blend and reduce the number of steps. I don't know, let's try 10. And that's probably about right, although I am going to select these N1 again and rotate it a little bit more. And then we're gonna adjust where it ends. So double click, we need to move it down. So we move the control point up and we need to move it over. So that's about right where I want it there. And then down here, we do the same thing. We click on it once, click on it a second time and we just move that down just a little bit. So it looks like something like that. And basically, I think I'm going to be happy with that. Now, I'm going to make a copy of this because I want to just show you something we're going to try. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like until we actually do it. But for this, what I think to me what makes the most sense is we're just going to select what we have over here. Let's get rid of this path. We don't need that anymore. And let's just flip this over because I think that actually makes the most sense. All right. Now, what do we do about this intersection here? Well, th this is a, a decision process that we have to make, um, but I think I have an answer. Um, what I'm actually going to wind up doing is deleting this very end one. But before we get to that point, let's go ahead and select our path and we'll hit BS. And what that does is it just separates. See, it separates all these. So I can delete this one on the end. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. We select our, our blend group and click on 
BS. And again, we're gonna just delete that N1. And then these two here, I'm just going to uh, right click and that will connect those two paths into one. You can see that how that has been connected there. Now, these down here, actually, I'm gonna undo that last step. I'm not ready to connect those two just yet because I wanna delete some of what's going on down here. So I'm just gonna add a node to the path just by double clicking on the path and then double clicking to add a node. And then we're gonna delete it back to there. And then these, I'm just gonna come in here and select them and delete them. I wanna be careful that I'm selecting the right ones and deleting the right ones. There we go. So we have that and then we have this. All right, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Now these paths, if we go into wireframe mode, just like I was showing you earlier, these don't have any value. So in fact, let me come in here. I need to do a little bit better selection here. So we're gonna come in here and select all this. And this, we need to select this path as well. This path should line up right to that. Ah, I guess these are connected. All right, well these sh should not be connected. So let's break those apart. And now the halves are separate. So let's try making that selection again. So I want this to be right there, make that connection right there. Okay, but you can see this has no thickness information. So now we're gonna convert that. So just use this convert outline to object. And same thing here, we're gonna convert outline to object. But actually before we do that, we wanna connect these two paths. So now that we have this already set, we'll right click on ban and then convert. And you can see what that does is makes a nice sharp point there. Um, so now what I wanna do is I wanna weld all of this together. So let's go ahead and do that. Just come in here and make a selection and choose the weld option here. And that will weld all of that together. Now, the next thing we wanna do, let's go back to enhance mode here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to take our laces and trim off this piece that extends beyond the ball. So to do that, we're just gonna select, you can see this whole piece is now one and the ball and choose the intersect option here. And it'll create a new shape. So we'll go ahead and now we can delete this. You see there, there's that new shape. So now what we can do here is come in here and let's see here, let's, I guess we'll use our shape edit tool and we can delete the part of the shape that we don't need which is basically gonna go all the way back to this point here. So let's delete all of this. We don't wanna panic just yet, get everything deleted. And I'm just gonna right click on the edge and choose to line. And it looks like we deleted a little bit too much. We don't wanna delete those corner points right there. So we'll just delete these. There we go. And it looks like we got one more node there. And then if we right click on the edge now and choose to line, you can see it just creates a straight line, which is fine. So now you basically have these two separate parts, but now we're gonna select them both and weld them together. And so now you can see we just have the one. Now we need to basically do the same thing over here. If we go into wireframe mode, you can see the path. We need to convert it to an object. This path here, let's see here. Okay, it still has a blend group on it, so let's select the blend group and break it from the path. Then we can select our path and give it a thickness. And then, just like before, it's basically the same process. We're just gonna take this and weld it. Then we need to trim it by doing an intersection. We'll give that new object a color, and then we can delete the old object. 
So if we go back here in enhance mode, we can see better now what we've actually created. So this piece is sitting directly on top of our softball, as is this piece, and that's probably how I would leave it. And that's basically the finished product. Um, then it's just a matter of adding whatever additional uh, text information that we want to add, which in this case, I guess, was softball mom, and whatever font of our choice. And now this is ready to cut. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to take advantage of some of the tools, especially tools here in Easy Stone to simplify some of this process. Um, and when you see something that you like, uh, it's relatively easy to make a similar version of it um, if you're not able to find the design file to your liking. Thanks for watching.